What's happening guys, my name is Grizzno, and did anyone happen to catch the Bethesda showcase at E3 last night? I know I sure did! Oh my god, Fallout 4, yes! I've been waiting for this game for so long. It's incredible. They finally announced it, and it's been. And the best part is, is it's coming out this year, November 10th, 2015, 10 days before this guy's birthday. So I know what I'll be getting myself as an early birthday gift uh, to myself, that's for sure. But uh, I thought I'd do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna show some footage that they showed last night. I won't have any sound in it, obviously, or anything like that. And I'm gonna do a commentary over everything so that. I won't get any copyright strikes. I wasn't really sure if I was allowed to re-upload this footage, but you know, F it. I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm super excited about the game, and I thought if anyone missed it, I could at least bring this uh, somewhat visual representation of what they showed and talk about it a little bit. Now, Howard talked about a lot of different stuff and showed a lot of different stuff for Fallout 4, so I'm not gonna just rehash everything that he said obviously that would take way too long and be way too boring so instead i'm going to uh, just talk about things that i thought were really cool about the game being a fallout fan i can sort of pick up the things that are, are interesting to us core fans and i think you guys will appreciate that appreciate that a bit so let's go i'm gonna talk just a few things um that i thought were really really cool starting with your character actually speaks for the first time ever in the series, I'm pretty sure, the character speaks. Um, no more just listening to one side of the conversation and then just picking the responses. Well, I mean, obviously you still pick the responses, but this time he'll actually say lines of dialogue, which I think is pretty neat. Definitely th something I always thought could be in the game. However, the argument could be made, I think, that having your character not actually speak is actually a bit more immersive in the sense that you can sort of imagine your own voice speaking the dialogue instead of having knowledge of what your character's, what his or her's voice actually sounds like. It makes it seem a little more like, you know, you're playing through someone else's eyes rather than your own. It's a curious change for Fallout though, and while it's not major or game changing or anything like that, I still think some fans of the series might at least initially uh, not be too thrilled about this. Eventually they'll get over it, but yeah, it's a curious move is all I wanted to mention, and I think that uh, I think I, I won't mind. I don't I don't think I'll mind, but um, I think that some people might at least initially. But like I said, I'm sure they'll get over it rather quickly once they start seeing the uh, where the location where it takes place, which is stuff. I mean, it's definitely no secret. The game takes place in and around the ruins of Boston, Massachusetts. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the f also the first coastal city uh, Fallout has ever been set in. Previous landlocked lo locales being Washington DC and of course the Nevada desert. I'm hoping this will come into play somehow, like with, with boats and stuff and missions you have to do out on the sea or something. Uh, as they showed in the demo, there seem to already be flying machines resembling pirate ships and that uh, that still shot of the ghoul dressed in red coat-like attire is just oh so enticing to me due to the fact that I also live in a coastal town which is actually about as close to Boston as you can get while still being from Canada. In fact, Halifax and Boston have a kind of special bond and if you've never heard that story before I can tell you in another video because we're talking about Fallout right now. But I was really pumped about the visuals that were on Showcase of the City so far. Look at this stuff, it just looks amazing. And I can't wait to see what that settlement at Fenway Park is all, is all about. All I'm saying is there better be a sniper tower on top of the green monster, I'll tell you that much. But yeah, everything looks stunning. The wasteland looks amazing as always. Um, the director talked it, about it being a whole new engine designed to give you the most freedom in choosing how you wanted to play the game, whether it be you know, straight up first person Call of Duty style all the time or third person as well. And there's a new dynamic lighting engine as well, which is what makes this crazy new ambiance in the world that wasn't really there in previous titles. I don't know, but it's definitely cool and I'm definitely liking how all the visuals are looking so far. Another interesting to thing to me as a Fallout fan for a while has, is that there 
is in the occlusion of a pre-bomb section. Um, the game opens at a time where the bombs have not actually fallen yet. And I think we've only ever seen this one time before in Fallout 3 where you do that weird dream mission thing that transports you back to before the bombs fell. But it was only one mission. Now, I'm assuming this will just be the intro to the game, but it's still really cool that they included that, I think, because the period before the bombs fell is kind of very important to the lore of Fallout because it's in the future, but it's like 1950s style. Everyone's like dressed in 50s attire and like the TVs are all... <laughs> Anyways, but it's because of this pre-bomb section and the, and the time that they live in and the style that they... the lifestyles that they have, I guess. It's important to the lore of, of Fallout, so I'm, I'm really glad that they decided to include even the smallest uh, little section of a, of a pre-bomb um, wasteland, I guess. And this is, for the first time in the series, having your character be alive and conscious in that time period is just, yeah, really cool. Next thing I wanted to talk about is the dog! Everybody's best friend is back in Fallout 4, and he's better than ever. He's got a whole new command system, which allows you to point at stuff and give him commands, like, go over there, boy, and he goes over there, so that's pretty cool. But you can also just, you can, um, he can be sent over to pick up items for you and bring them back, which is, is pretty useful, and I can see having to use the, the dog to get to areas where your character can't physically go to find hin hidden items. I'm betting that's going to be a part of his function here, and if not, sorry Bethesda, but you really missed a mark on that one because that should, you should, you, th you should have thought of that. Thought you thought of everything, did ya? No, really. I don't know if they did or not, uh, but I'm assuming it is because they really did think of everything. So much so that there is, the game has a fully functional crafting feature, much like you would find in a game like Rust or even Minecraft, which is just mind-blowing. How did they manage to cram this much into one game? It is literally amazing to witness. Um, so you can scrap materials you find in the world and use them to build. You can build your own custom structures. You can tear down existing structures and rebuild, uh, rebuild them the way you want. Or you can add on to existing structures in the world to create crazy massive complexes. And of course you can add funny neon signs telling people to F off as well. Your, your settlements can and will be attacked by raiders, so you also have to build defenses, which I think is really neat. So um, included in the crafting features, uh, you have the ability to put down power generators, which in turn power things like lights, turrets, and booby traps to help keep you and your settlers safe. Um, you can even attach terminals to your turrets and lights and have even more control over them. Like, this is insane, guys. This is beyond anything any Fallout has ever done, and they've already done so much. It's, it's, oh, I can't wait. So, I'm so excited for this game. That's another, um, another crazy, crazy thing about this crafting stuff is that you, you actually, uh, if you actually build a small settlement, merchants will move, move there and sell you their wares. Apparently they come with some of the best items in the game too, so it's, it kind of puts a purpose on uh, building a settlement beyond just pure fun. To make things even more in-depth, uh, you know, because it totally needs to be more in-depth, <laughs> you will have to make sure that your settlers have basic necessities for life, such as food and water. And as a final cherry on the top of this Sunday. It's a completely optional part of the game, so if you aren't interested in building, you don't have to. Genius. Now, building an entire settlement with a growing population, supplies, and defense is not enough for you? Well, you can also build and modify almost any weapon in the game, which, by the way, ships with over 50 base weapons uh, included. Awesome. On the first day. <laughs> and the materials you use to make and modify these weapons are now found in all those little random items that are scattered throughout the wasteland. You know all those random items like the toy cars and the toasters that previously didn't have a whole lot of use? Well, now they do. Um, these items are where you'll find the raw materials you'll need to make these weapon mods and like scopes and things of that nature. So. This is really cool because it gives these random items that are just everywhere a bit more of a purpose, but uh, it also creates a problem because now I'm going to be constantly fighting over encumbrance even more because I'm going to want to pick up everything in sight. And last but not least, Bethesda is giving us all our very own chance to own our very own Pip-Boy. 
Yes, that's right. The collector's edition of the game comes with an actual Pip-Boy. You can even put your phone inside of it and use the Pip-Boy app they've created on your phone so you can take your place on the throne as king of the nerds. Just kidding, obviously. I think this is super cool and uh, that, that they did this for this fa for the fans. Just another one of those things that puts Bethesda and the Fallout series in a league of their own and it's no wonder they've managed to win game of the year for the last for their last three titles capture so many people's hearts mine included in the process i don't know if i'll actually spring for the collector's edition it all depends on the price but i certainly respect any man willing to shell out the cash and i would certainly be, je be jealous of you if you were showing it to me in your bachelor apartment or mom's basement or whatever i'm kidding guys <laughs> So as you can probably tell, I'm beyond pumped for the game, you guys. It's not even funny. Um, let me know how you felt about the presentation in the comments down below. Please let me know all of your hopes and dreams for Fallout 4 as well. I'd love to hear them. I'd love to hear what everyone else's thoughts are on it so far. I'm in love already. I can't wait to snipe some raiders from the top of the green monster. Now they did show off a lot of different stuff in the demo, but they also left out a lot more, I think. They did, however, show this. Mounted miniguns on some sort of shuttle that comes to pick you up on demand. It sure looks like it to me anyway. My name is Grizzno guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of it all down in the comments below. Later.